Click, click. Hi everyone, this is Big Head Taco from, uh, I mean Samuel from Samuel Street Life. Uh, welcome back to another video. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Ricoh GR version 3, but I'm also going to share my own personal settings or how I use my camera or my secrets. Before I do that, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. So check it out and let's continue. All right, so I'm going to start with an overview of the Ricoh GR version 3. Uh, this will be for all of you who are new to the GR and you never used one before. You might be wondering like how do I change ISO and what does this button do and stuff like that. So this is for you guys. And if you're already familiar with the camera and you just want to see my settings, uh, you can skip this part and I'm going to post timestamps here so you know where to go. Okay, let's have a look at the body first. Now when you look at the back, you will see that all the buttons are on the right side and that is perfect because you want to be able to use this camera one-handed because this is so compact, you don't want to use both hands all the time. Uh, on the front we have the lens itself um, and this here, this is a little ring that you can detach. Now you might ask yourself, why do I want to do that? Um, let's say you want to use a filter, you need something like that, which is an adapter and you can put it on and then put a filter on it and then your lens is also protected and you can also put the lens hood on it so like that um, and I use that for events for example or I don't know just if I want to protect my lens I might want to use that. Let's look at the top of the camera um, now here where the hot shoe is I attach a little viewfinder uh, this is not very necessary um, because this is just an optical viewfinder, it's just some glass uh, with 28mm frame lines. Um, you won't get any information shown here. So when critical framing is important, uh, better use the LCD. But if you want to use a viewfinder, there are options. Then we have this front dial here. Um, this is to change the shutter speed. You can also set it to be the aperture dial uh, by going into the menu. But I'm going to cover that later. And then we have this pill shaped shutter button here. Down below is the on and off button and next to it is the mode dial. Um, now this is very important for anyone who is using this camera for the first time. You might be wondering why can't I use it and that's because it's locked. Um, you have to press this and hold it down and then you can change your mode like so. So we have manual mode, shutter priority, aperture priority and program. And then we have the user modes. Now these user modes are, I think, the most important modes for you because uh, you can assign them to be the program mode or the aperture priority mode, uh, anything really. Um, I also have to mention that everything you change inside the camera will be saved automatically unless you're using the user modes. Uh, for the user modes, you have to go into the menu and save your settings manually. Uh, it's very important. Let's look at the back of the camera. Uh, here on the top we have the adjustment button. You can press it, but it's also a lever, so you can, you know, push it to the left and to the right. And you also use that for the exposure compensation. So next to it here on the side we have the playback button. Here is an FN button. Uh, FN stands for function. And this is a button you can assign to be whatever you want. Uh, we will get to it. Um, it's also the delete button in the playback mode. Then we have this dial here, this is new and it's also a d-pad. Down below we have display and menu. So last but not least, here on the side we have the movie record button and it's also the Wi-Fi button. If you hold this button down, it will activate the Wi-Fi. If you press it once, it will go into movie mode. Okay, I'm going to turn on the camera now and I'm going to set my mode dial to M for my manual exposure. Uh, let's look at the screen. On the top right corner we have the SD card sign. We also see how many shots are left and we also get information about the JPEG file size, which is L in my case, which stands for large. If you shoot RAW or RAW Plus, it will show here as well. On the upper left corner we have um, information about the image control or the picture profile, uh, white balance, metering mode, the shake reduction is on here on my camera and we have single shot drive mode. Uh, on the bottom right corner we see an information about the battery, uh, next to it is the uh, exposure compensation, then we have ISO and then we have 
aperture and shutter speed. Now when you look at shutter speed and aperture you see a little icon which shows you uh, how to set your shutter speed. In this case in my manual mode it says I should use the front dial. So if I do that my shutter speed changes and to change my aperture I have to use the adjustment toggle here on the back to go right or left and change my aperture that way. So how do I change the ISO? Um, if you press on the ISO button on your camera, uh, you will see that a little FN icon pops up. This gives you the option to switch between uh, auto ISO or manual ISO. And to change the ISO, you have to turn the wheel on the back. So that way you can change the ISO. If you want to shoot auto ISO, you press the FN button once and it will switch to auto. So what do we have next? Oh, very important um, and very handy is this little quick menu here. If you press the adjustment button, you get this little quick menu. And here you have options to, for example, change your image control or your picture profiles. Um, next to it, we have focus modes. Um, next to it is metering. Uh, on default, it's set on multi-segment. This means the camera will measure everything in the frame and decides what is the best exposure. If you want to have a little bit more control, you can use center weighted, for example. Then the camera will only look at the middle portion of the frame. Uh, you can also use spot metering. Then the camera will only look at the, the middle of the frame. And then we have something that is unique to the GR, which is highlight weighted metering. Uh, if you select that, the camera will never overexpose any highlights. So if that's important to you, uh, you could use that. And next to it we have a file format, so you can switch between JPEG, RAW or RAW plus JPEG. And on the right side we have outdoor view settings and here you can change the brightness of the LCD. Really nice, very fast. Then we have four more buttons here on the wheel or on the D-pad. Uh, if you press up you go into the macro mode. Uh, make sure that you go out of the macro mode if you don't need it. And on the right side you have the drive mode where you can select, you know, continuous shooting or there are many other options as well. And you can also set a timer. Um, so by pressing down, you go to the white balance menu and there you can change your white balance. So um, that leaves us with the movie record button. If you press that, the camera will go into movie record uh, mode. If you press it again, you're back into photo mode. If you hold down the movie record button, a little Wi-Fi icon will pop up and if you connect to your camera or smartphone, uh, this will turn white. And by the way, if you want to know how to use the Wi-Fi or the app, uh, check out my last live stream I did with the Rico product manager here of Rico Germany. We made a little demo how to use it. Uh, I will link it below, so check it out. And here's a little quick tip. Uh, if you want to review your images real quick and don't want to turn on your camera, uh, you can hold down the playback button and if you do that uh, the camera turns on but it will go immediately into the playback uh, view mode and then you can review your photos and by pressing it again you can turn off the camera. Um, let us actually go into the playback mode and I want to show you how to navigate through your images. Now you can do that by just swiping uh, like you do on your phone and if you want to zoom in you can do a pinch to zoom and you can also double tap to get a 100% view. Um, you can also zoom by using the front dial. By pressing the adjustment button once, you will also get a 100% view. And then here's something that I discovered yesterday just by accident. Uh, if you are in playback mode, um, press the movie record button once, and then you get this little uh, extra menu here, which gives you options for, um, for deleting images, protecting images, rotating images, uh, copying images, you can transfer files, you can go right into the raw developer, uh, you can resize it, crop it, uh, do level adjustments, change the white balance and to go out of that menu just press menu once. If you want to see more information about the image you took uh, just press the display button to get more detailed information. Now there are many options to edit your photos inside the camera. You can go into the menu Go down to raw development and if you press on that you will go right into the raw developer and here you can edit your raw file. So the first option you get is resolution. 
Down below we have aspect ratio, then you can change the color space, uh, white balance, you can change that as well. If you go all the way down, you can also change it manually. And also, by the way, anytime you see this little FN icon, that means you can change even more. So press on that FN button when you are in manual white balance mode, and then you can see you can really dial in the right uh, Kelvin if you want. You can also change the color tint. Uh, if you want to go back, just press menu again until you are back into the raw developer. So under white balance, we have image control or the picture profiles. Um, here you can, you know, set it to black and white, vivid mode or standard. Um, if you want to change them in more detail, again, just press the FN button and then you can uh, change the saturation, hue, uh, make it brighter, add more contrast. Uh, also change the color channels if you are in black and white mode. Um, so let's see what else we have. Uh, I would go to sensitivity for example. Here you can change uh, the overall brightness, which I would always do first when I start my editing. Then you can apply noise reduction if you want and you also have options for recovering the shadows. Now if you are happy with your edit and you want to save it to, to become a JPEG, you just press OK and then it will save it to be a JPEG. Now what if you want to do edits on your JPEG files? Um, you can do it as well. I would say uh, try to edit your raw files if possible because if you edit JPEG files um, they are already finished products. You know if you change the brightness you will destroy the image a little bit um, but you can do that still. Um, so go back to the playback settings and below raw development you will find level adjustment for example. And here you can change uh, the whites, the blacks and the midtones. So below level adjustment we have white balance adjustment. You can change your white balance here. Again, if you shoot JPEG it will be hard to correct the white balance unless you only do a little bit of correction. So if you want to do heavy editing try to shoot in RAW. Okay, so below we have more correction. Uh, you can set it to low, medium or high. Then we have base parameter adjustments. Uh, which means brightness, saturation, hue, contrast and sharpness. So the basics. Okay, so that was a quick overview of the Ricoh GR version 3. Now I'm going to go into more detail now by showing you my personal settings and how I set up my GR3. Um, so from top to bottom you will see all the changes I made. So you can follow along and uh, copy my settings. Um, I will say though you have to start uh, using the user modes now because if you don't do that and decide to use them later you have to do it all over again. So I'm going to start with showing you my user setting uh, user mode sorry user mode number one. So what I want to kill first is the little AF assist light here. This is the light here on the front that flashes when you focus. So go into the menu under still image settings and then AF assist light. So turn that off and we are at peace. I'm also not a fan of noise reduction. I always turn it off completely. Uh, I don't even leave it on a little bit because uh, I prefer details over a clean image. Um, I, I don't care if it's noisy. I just want to see the details and don't get this mushy soft image, you know. So I turn it off and I go into the menu under still image settings and then all the way down to noise reduction and then turn slow shutter speed noise reduction off, high ISO noise reduction off. Uh, if you are a fan of noise reduction uh, it is actually quite nice on this camera because you have custom options to even decide how much noise reduction is applied on each ISO value. So kind of cool but uh, I, don't, I don't need it. The touchscreen of the GS3 is actually very responsive and if you like to select your focus point by touching the screen uh, you can do that. Me personally I only use the middle AF point because I always focus and recompose later. Um, so I turn that off. So let's go into the menu again and now we go down to the C icon which stands for customize settings and then if you go down we will have touch AF and then I will turn it off. Uh, but you could use it. Sometimes I find it handy to use the AF point selection but 
I would really like Recode to give us a touch to release the shutter option. That way I can shoot by touching the screen. That would be something that I would use a lot. I want this camera to be as fast as possible and I don't need to see my image after taking it. Uh, I want to be in the moment and be fast so I turn instant review off. Next I turned off a guide display. Now guide display can be useful for any of your beginners who are starting to learn this camera. Uh, what it means is every time you turn on your camera you get this little information here which shows you uh, what the buttons are doing. Um, you will get used to it uh, some day so you can turn it off. Now if you want to be really ninja you can go into the menu and actually turn off the on off light which lights up green if you turn on the camera. You can do so by going into the menu under setup and then power button lamp. Last step to make this camera a fit for the street is to turn down all the sound effects. And you can do so by going into the menu, setup and then down to not sound effects but volume and then go down to zero. Okay, now we covered what I eliminated in my camera, what I don't need. Uh, next, I'm going to show you all the settings I need or want. And I'm going to start by going uh, to the top of the menu and go down step by step so you can follow me. And if you want to save the settings later, uh, make sure you are still in the user mode um, because I'm also going to save my settings later so you can see how to save the settings uh, inside your camera. Okay, let's start. The first one is focus. Uh, I use select AF and I also only use the middle AF point. And that is because um, I like to point at my subject first, focus and then recompose. And also my users, user mode number one is my, I call it the master uh, mode. I set up my user mode number one to give me the most control. Um, and I use the back button focus technique. Uh, which means I assigned my FN button to be my focus button and I disabled my focus on my shutter button. I will show it to you later in more detail, but that's why I use the middle point AF because I can do back button focusing first on my subject and then recompose, hold my exposure and then release the shutter. So next we have face detection. Uh, I have it on for all my focus modes because uh, the face detection is actually very good on the GR3. Um, as I said, I focus in the middle and uh, point to my subject first, but sometimes the face detection will be faster. So I can already see that my subject is, has this frame around her face or his face, and then I can focus and I know the face is in focus. Uh, snap focus distance. Uh, I set it to one meter. You can set it up to any distance you want. Uh, maybe I should explain how to use the snap mode. You can go into the quick menu and select uh, snap focus by going into the quick menu. Uh, but the downside is you lose the ability to, to, to have autofocus. The snap mode is really beneficial if you also are going to use the, the autofocus and I'm going to show it to you why. Um, but first, if you are in snap mode or snap focus, you get the distance scale here on the left. And this is basically like zone focusing because now if you hold down the macro button and then use the front dial, uh, you can change the distance. And it, you can also see on the top right corner um, what meter you are on, like one meter, one and a half, two, two and a half, five, and infinity. But you also get to see how much is in focus. What is your focus area? And if you close down your aperture to f8 or f10, you will see that the green bound on the left will get wider. So that means you have more in focus. So how can you use snap focus while also having AF enabled? Um, for that you have to go, let me quickly turn it back to select AF. So when you go into the menu, uh, one below snap focus distance is full press snap. And make sure that that is turned on. And if so, then you don't need to go into the quick menu and select snap focus. Uh, you already get the distance indication here on the top right corner, which in my case says one meter. 
And now I have AF um, and then let's say I use one meter like I always use and then I focus to infinity or I see something in the distance and I focus to it, take a shot and then let's say suddenly some guy comes up and I don't know, it dances in front of me uh, and I see it's around one meter in front of me. I can quickly do a quick snap and I know that the snap focus latches onto the one meter distance. So that's how I use uh, snap focus. I hope that explains it. Uh, if not, maybe check out my first impression video. I, I showed it there as well. Okay, let's continue. So in the menu, when we go down, uh, we will find the exposure mode. Now you can set your user modes to be, you know, aperture priority or shutter priority, even P mode. Uh, in my case, I like to set it to manual exposure. So I set it to M. Now let's go out of the menu because now I'm going to set up my base uh, exposure values. Um, for shutter speed, I choose 1 250th of a second. My aperture is f4.5 and ISO I set to auto. Um, and I chose to use these values because uh, most of the time they gave me the best baseline so I can quickly change them if I want to. Um, let's say if I'm indoors, I can really quickly change my aperture to become an f2.8 for example or change my shutter speed. And when I'm outside, uh, I can also quickly close my aperture. So it's a really fast way for me to change my exposure on the fly. So for metering, I use uh, center-weighted metering and that is because, um, because I shoot auto ISO, the camera chooses the exposure for me. But when I shoot center-weighted metering, I can uh, manipulate the exposure by pointing to areas inside the frame uh, that changes the exposure. So let's say I have a bright sky and I really want the sky to be uh, exposed properly. Uh, I would just hold it to the sky hold down my shutter button to hold the exposure and then I can reframe my image and take a shot and have the, the, the exposure that I want. Um, the same goes for a dark area. Let's say I want to, really want to see what's up in the shadows. I will point to a shadow area and then the exposure will raise up and then I hold it again, recompose and then take the shot. So that's why you center weighted metering. Next we have ISO settings. Uh, because I shoot auto, I have my order upper limit to ISO 6400 and my lower limit to 100 and my minimum shutter speed is 125th of a second. Next we have flash mode. Uh, now the GR3 has no built-in flash, so you need to use an external flash, but you need to turn your flash mode uh, on for the camera to recognize any external flash. And you know what, let me show you some of the flashes I use. So I already showed this in my first impression uh, video. Um, I got this little flash here from Lightpix Labs. Uh, the cool thing about this is you can also detach it and use it as an external flash, which is fun. The downside is that this is fully manual, so you need to get the exposure right and guess your distance to your subject. Um, otherwise you will be overexposed. Uh, if you want to have TTL with your flash, um, you might want to look into something like this. This is the Pentax AF201 FG. Um, this is not made for the GR, but I think it fits perfectly to the GR system. So this is a TTL flash, so you can turn it on and use auto. And then, you know, it doesn't matter what settings I have or what distance I am to the subject, the camera will automatically um, know what's up. <laughs> so. Uh, that can be very useful if you shoot events where you have to be fast. So this flash can tilt up or forward. This is all I need basically. You also have this um, filter here so you can spread uh, the flash if you use the wide angle conversion lens for example. So let's go back into the menu. File format is uh, set to RAW. Now in the past I was always shooting RAW plus JPEG. Um, but now I try, I'm trying to edit more on the computer and let my images sit for a while. So I shoot RAW only to um, not be able to send my images straight to my phone yet um, to quickly publish them on Instagram because I want to take more time now and really decide what I'm going to publish. So I shoot RAW and if I need a JPEG, I can just go into the playback mode to my RAW developer 
and then I would edit my raw files inside the camera. Next is image control or picture profile or film simulation or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I set it to positive film. Uh, that's because positive film is my all-time favorite film simulation. Uh, since I got my first original GR in 2013, I fell in love with this specific look. Uh, I love it so much that I even created a Lightroom preset pack uh, based on this look. Um, also because I wanted to be able to color match my cameras um, because I'm also using Fujifilm by the way and you know you also cannot use the effects on your RAW files so if you are a fan of the positive film look like I am uh, you might want to check out my preset pack it's on my website I have a link in the description I also use um, the monotone black and white effect quite a lot I really like um, how the midtones are rendered I uh, really enjoy that so I'm, I'm sure you want to see my uh, film simulation settings here. So let's see positive film, saturation plus one, hue to default, uh, high low key adjustment plus one, contrast is set to default. Okay, we are back in the still image settings menu. Uh, if we go down below image control, there is D range correction, which stands for dynamic range correction. Uh, here, if you go inside that, you can correct uh, the highlights. I set it to auto and for shadow, I just turned it off because um, usually the shadows are fine. You can always pull up the shadows later. So uh, noise reduction, as I said in the beginning, all set to zero or off. So that's it for still image settings. Uh, let's go down to movie settings. Now this, I won't touch on movie settings because I don't use this camera for video. If you want to, um, go check it out yourself and find what works best for you. For me, it's, it's not good enough. So playback settings, uh, we already discussed it in the beginning. If you missed that, uh, just go back to my first part of this video. So customize settings, uh, here's where the fun starts. So let's go all the way up. First one is save settings. Uh, I'm not going to do that now uh, because I want to save my settings at the end. Uh, you might want to do that as well. So I'm going to skip the first few parts here in the menu and let's go to M mode dial settings. So click on that and here you can set uh, your front dial to be you know, shutter speed or aperture. It's up to you. Um, but this only works for uh, the exposure, the manual exposure mode. Next we have adjust mode setting. Uh, let's go into it. And that is this button here on the back, uh, which gives you the quick menu. And you basically here set up your quick menu. So if you don't want to have uh, the image control or the film simulations uh, first, you can set it up to be, you know, your drive mode or um, your aspect ratio. You can set it to change your resolution. Um, all kinds of options here. Um, for me, I just set it to the default settings. I don't need to change it. Now we finally arrived at FN button setting. Now here you can customize the buttons of your camera, uh, mainly this FN button here, but also other buttons as well. So let's go into it. Uh, the first one is the FN button here on the back. And because I use it for back button focusing, uh, I enabled the AF here. So if I go inside, I clicked on enable AF. The ISO button is just the ISO button for me. Uh, my drive button is also still the drive button. But my movie and Wi-Fi button, uh, I set it to crop uh, because I actually like to use the 35 mm crop mode on this camera um, because I think it's still 16 megapixel. You can also use the crop mode for your RAW files. Uh, they will automatically crop to 35 mm or 50. And for me, this is a really nice way to quickly change uh, my crop modes. Okay, next we have focus settings. I'm not quite sure what they are doing. Uh, I just leave it at shutter. Keep AE lock, it's turned off. 
Uh, one push AE in M mode is set to aperture priority. Now we arrived at shutter button setting and this is important if you want to use the back button focus method. Um, here you have to set it to AE lock, not AF plus AE lock. Because if you set it to AF plus AE lock, it will focus and at the same time lock the exposure. Uh, but all you want is to only lock the exposure. So I set it to AE lock. LCD touch operation, uh, I left it on because I like to use the touch screen sometimes, uh, especially in playback mode to switch between my uh, images. But touch AF is turned off. Uh, below that we have shooting info display. Yeah, I'm going to show you my display settings. Uh, I didn't change much here, I think. Uh, uh, playback info display, I didn't do anything here. It's nothing is selected, uh, but you could if you want. Quick zoom is set to 100% uh, because I want to see, when I zoom in, I want to see the full 100% crop. Uh, also, if you are going to shoot uh, with face detection on, and you focus on the face, if you zoom in 100% it will jump to this person's face. So it's really nice to quickly check uh, if you got the focus right. So last but not least we have setup um, and the first setting here is to format your SD card. Now this camera also has internal memory, I think 2 gigabytes. So in case you miss your SD card you can still shoot. Uh, copyright information of course, um, you can type in, you know, like I don't know, Hans Wurst, amazing photographer. Um, oh, and here we have LCD setting. The only change I made here is to turn down the brightness a little bit, like three steps to the left. And also I want to mention that the Ricoh GR is not a finished product yet. Uh, Ricoh will always update the camera with firmware updates and then you know, features like the film grain that is not available yet, but you can see it inside the RAW developer. They will be activated later. And also the Bluetooth, for example, uh, is still not available, but this is something that will come with firmware updates. So this is something to consider if you get the GR. Okay, now I set up my user mode number one, and now I'm going to save my settings. And under customize settings, all the way on the top, we now have six different slots where we can save our settings. So, and you see here on my screen, I already have three custom user modes or settings. Uh, user mode number one, this one I call it master because I have the full control. User mode number two for me is the snap mode. And it's basically the same as user mode number one, uh, but only without back button focusing, uh, just the usual uh, shutter button for focusing. Then I have uh, user mode number three, which for me is for flash photography. And what I changed here is um, I usually shoot JPEG and uh, manual ISO and I think the rest is pretty much the same. Uh, I also close the aperture quite a bit to f8 and the ISO is around 3200 um, but it's not final yet. I always change uh, user mode number three. Um, let's say you want to save your settings now and then you can enter a name uh, then you press ok or touch the enter button here and now you can assign this setting to one of your user modes. Now, what if you want to copy all the changes you made, all the settings you already saved on your user mode number one to your other user modes? Um, you can do that by going to the customized settings uh, under recall, and then you click on that, and then you select the, the, the slot or the user mode you want to assign the settings to, uh, and then it says recall, so now this means I'm going to copy my user mode number one settings to my user mode number three. I press OK. And now you see that my user mode number three has the same settings as my user mode number one. It, it even has the same name. <sighs> so I think that's enough. Uh, I think we covered a lot. So these are my settings. This is how I set up my GR3. I hope this was useful to you and you learned something and if not, let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to answer some of your questions. Um, also, if you use your camera differently, uh, let us know as well. I would love to see how you use your camera. Um, yeah, maybe others can learn from that as well. And if you feel like going to the next level and improve your skills as a photographer, you might want to check out today's sponsor Skillshare.
The class that I recently watched and very much enjoyed was from National Geographic photographer Amy Vitali. She teaches you how to capture places and people, especially lesson number five. I found that very interesting because she talks about how to find a story and where to look for. And for me, I saw many similarities to street photography, so I can highly recommend her class. If you want to see more, the premium membership gives you unlimited access to all classes from experts working in their fields. And Skillshare is also incredible affordable and annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, they give you the opportunity to try out their premium membership for free for two months. Uh, all you need to do is click on that link below or here on the screen. Um, this will only be active for the first 500 of you who click on that link. After that, there's no chance to getting it back. So try it out and learn some new skills. Thank you Skillshare for supporting my channel. So that's finally it. I can't wait to edit this mess. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.